Namo Buddhaya. Welcome to our first program of Path to Happiness. We at Shraddha TV always bring you the purest Dhamma teaching of our Supreme Buddha. We chose this program to bring you solutions for, our, for your day-to-day -day problems. We choose to take a very practical aspects of our of lives and then give you the light of Dhamma so that we can be happier than you are. We know most of us in the society are frustrated, stressful and disappointed. Mostly they are sad. So we know very well Dhamma teach us to be happy amongst those who are sad. So that is the prime objective of our program of Path to Happiness. To help us with Dhamma knowledge, Dhamma teaching of our Supreme Buddha, we have invited a Manian Mahansa from Muthugala Dhambadeniya Mahame Unavanagarika Monastery. Let us all welcome our Manian Mahansa to the program. Namo Buddha Manian Mahansa. As the first uh, topic of our program, we chose something very interesting and also quite close to all of us. There won't be any person who have never got angry. Yes, the topic for today is anger. We will talk about anger in detail so that end of the program you will realize how to be happy and how to not get angry and how to refrain from angry. So stay with us. We will take you, we will tell you the teaching of our Supreme Buddha to help you be happier than you are. So to start our today's discussion, Man in Mahansa, what our Supreme Buddha, how has he uh, explained about anger? What does it mean by anger by the, with the use of suttas and Dhammapada? Could you kindly explain to our viewers what is it about anger? What is it that uh, the Supreme Buddha has spoken about anger? Yes, um, before we get into talking about anger, we must first know um, what anger really is. And so we must realize that anger is something that we all feel. Um, I don't think there's anyone in this world who has not, who does not feel anger, uh, unless you're someone who has completely abandoned anger. And so, um, what anger really is is it's an unpleasant, uh, a resentful, a feeling of displeasure upon seeing things we we don't like. When we experience things we don't like, we feel angry. Or when we are very, um, when we are in a very stressful situation, for example, then the the chances of us getting angry is much higher. And also, the Supreme Buddha explains that there are some people who are always angry. There is no reason, but they're always in an angry mood. So in this way, we can see that anger is something that's always around us. And um, the Supreme Buddha explains there are actually different forms of this unpleasant feeling or ra rather different degrees of this uh, unpleasant feeling. The Supreme Buddha explains the first uh, uh, level of this unpleasant feeling is known as ill will. And what ill will is, is it's a very uh, momentary feeling of unpleasantness, a displeasure. For example, if you see someone um, who you don't like, you would um, you you would feel ill will towards that person. It's a, it's a feeling of unpleasantness. And if that unpleasantness, if that displeasure continues further, then it can turn into anger. The Supreme Buddha has explained. And what anger is is when that unpleasant feeling arises over and over again within you. So, for example, suppose something happened and you got angry with a certain person. And then the next time you see that person, you feel angry again. You feel that unpleasant feeling. You remember that your the situation you got angry, exactly. Yeah. So now you have you have not um, stopped that feeling there. You have continued it with yeah, you. Yeah, and so the next time you see that person, you um, you feel that unpleasant dis displeasure, that resentful feeling again. And so that's considered anger. And when you become angry, what happens is um, you don't want the Supreme Court explains in one sutta. When you feel this anger, you don't want to see the other person being successful. The Supreme Buddha explains, you don't even want to see that person sleeping well. You don't want to see that person um, having good friends around him. You don't want to see that person being successful in life. You basically want him to be ha unhappy and sad. Exactly. And that's what you want when you feel anger. And the Supreme Buddha explains when that anger 
comes to even greater degree, it turns into hatred. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to hatred, what happens is you come to the point where you actually want to take revenge from that person. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Buddha explains when it comes to this point where you feel hatred, it can even continue from one birth to another. So it's very serious. So anger is something that we really must um, be very mindful of. And if we can try to get rid of that unpleasant feeling at the very moment, then it won't develop further. Yeah. And in fact, the Supreme Buddha explains there are, there are three different types of people in this world who feel anger. And the Supreme Buddha explains one person's anger is like a, a line etched in stone. Now, what happens when you etch a line, a line in stone? It's quite difficult it to get forever. exactly. Yeah. It's quite difficult to get rid of it. Yeah. The, the weather, the sun, or the the winds doesn't take it away. So the Supreme Buddha explains: for some people, when they feel angry, that anger, that that unpleasant, that resentful feeling doesn't go away. It stays with them for a very long time. And then the uh, Supreme Buddha explains the second person is their anger is like a line um, drawn on the ground or sand. Mm -hmm. So if you draw, draw a line on, on the ground or sand, it stays there for some time, but it disappears after some time. With so the, time, yeah. Exactly. So the weather, the sun and the wind kind of you know, make it disappear. So yeah. the Supreme Buddha explains this type of person, he feels anger, he feels angry, but uh, within a few days or maybe even within a few hours, he gets rid of that anger. So there are some people in this world who are like that. And then the Supreme Buddha explains there's also another kind of person in this world. His anger is compared to a, a line drawn on water. Now when you draw a line on water, what happens? It disappears instantaneously, Instantly, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so the Supreme Buddha explains, for this person, he gets angry, but um, um, he gets rid of it quite easily. Mm -hmm. So for example, the Supreme Buddha in that sutta explains, it, for such a person, when someone comes and blames you or say harsh words to you, he quickly gets rid of that anger and the next moment he's friendly with you. He greets you, he mingles with you. Mm -hmm. So these, the Supreme Buddha explains, these are the three types of people in this world who feels anger. So I'm sure if you look around you, um, of, of your friends, of your family, you can see some people have anger that's like a line etched in stone. Some people's anger is like a line drawn on ground. And some people's anger is like a line, line drawn on sand, water. on water, exactly. Yeah. So these are the type of um, people in this world who feels anger. So we can invite our friends also to take a look at their own life and realize Absolutely. what type of anger they're dealing with. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, the Supreme Buddha explains, for someone who has anger, it's quite difficult if you're someone who has anger like the the first person we talked about that is um, line or line on stone. etched in stone, yeah. yeah. So Bimbo explains if you have anger like that, so that means you are someone who cult who develops that thought, that resentful feeling within you, you don't try to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. If you're a person like that, then it's quite hard for you to develop further in life. Mm -hmm. However, if you're someone like the person who, who is the person like the line drawn on water, then the Supreme Buddha explains for such a person, he, it's, he, it's quite easy for him to develop further. It's quite easy for him to develop his mind further. Because he, he instantly uh, yeah, let he, it go. Exactly. So he has qualities like compassion and loving kindness within him. Exactly. He has the qualities like understanding and forgive, the, the quality of forgiving to others. So those qualities, those human qualities helps him to develop further in life. So. Um, that's what the Supreme Buddha has uh, explained in terms of the Dhamma about anger. Also, man, Mahasa, we see in the society there are some people who seems to be very calm, uh, very uh, kind, and not seems to be getting angry. So, uh, with the look of it, by just looking at them, can we assume that they don't get angry? Or are they the type that they never get angry? Well, yeah, that's. I mean, from the first glance, some people do look like they're very peaceful and they're very mm -hmm. calm. But the reality is, um, unless you're someone who has completely abandoned anger, mm -hmm. that anger is within you. So, uh, in actually, in one sutta, the Supreme Buddha explains a beautiful story. And the Supreme Buddha explains, um, at one time, there was someone uh, named Vedehika. And uh, she was very famous as being very meek and gentle and very peaceful, someone who is very calm in life, someone who does not get angry. Mm -hmm. And so um, she had a servant named Kali, and, and the servant wanted to know, you know, she wanted to test her, her, her um, the patience. 
Yeah, she, she, she wanted to test her patience and mm -hmm. her to, to see whether it's actually true that she doesn't get angry. So yeah. what did what the servant did is one day she got up really late. Now mm -hmm. the servant is a very clever girl. She's mm -hmm. very smart. She does all her work on time. So there's nothing that the, the Lady Vedika has to worry about. So now yeah. one day what happened is she got up a bit late. And so Lady Vedika came to this um, servant, Kali, and, mm -hmm. and asked, you know, Kali, why did you get up late? Mm -hmm. And so Kali replied, um, Madam, nothing's the matter. I just, you know, got up a bit late. No big reason. Exactly. And so at that moment, by the tone of Lady Vedika's voice, Kali figured out, oh no, there is anger with, within my mistress. Mm -hmm. And so she thought, okay, I'm going to test this further. Mm -hmm. And then the next day also, she got up a bit late. And then this, the next day, um, Lady Vedika, Vedika came and she asked Kali. You know, her tone was a bit harsher than, than the first day. Before, yeah. yeah, and she asked, you know, uh, why did you get up so late? And then again, Kali replied, uh, Madam, nothing is the matter. I just got up late. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Kali knew, okay, it's true. Then my mistress do feel anger within mm -hmm. her. Now I'm going to test her out even more. Mm -hmm. Now on the third day, she got up even more late. And again, uh, Mistress Vedika, Vedika was very angry. What she did was she took a rolling pin and she started to um, hit her maiden Kali and of course Kali uh, ran away and uh, ran away and from the house and she started to say you know look at Mistress Vedika who is so who used to be known as meek and gentle look mm. look at what she did to me it's not what she looked exactly so from that what the Supreme Buddha explains is some people are very gentle and meek and peaceful for as long as they um, they get everything they want. So as long as everything is done in the work, uh, as long as everything is done in the house, then there's nothing to arouse the anger. But the moment things don't go the way they want, then that ang anger gets aroused. So. Uh, what what we can learn from that is the environment we are living in can really influence whether we get angry or not. So just because you may be peaceful and very um, calm in one place, when those conditions change, your your those thoughts of anger will uh, surface and arouse. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. So we can ask our friends also to be watchful of the people that they associate and then to see whether they cannot just come to conclusions, people don't get angry by the look of it. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. So uh, also, many of us are going to our next question. Um, Sometimes some people tend to re tend to know, almost justify anger. So it's a normal, it's a natural part of life. It's all right to get angry. To solve some problems, some, uh, some conditions, you need to get angry. So such way they sometimes try to justify uh, anger being a part of life. So is and that it's right? okay. Even whether it's okay to get angry. Exactly, that's true. I mean, being human beings, um, anger is something that we all feel for sure. That's actually the reason, that's one of the reasons that we have been traveling in this long journey of birth and death because of anger. We have um, accumulated a lot of bad karma in life and that's, that's one of the reasons that we are still in this long journey of samsara. Okay. And so at first glance it, it may seem uh, to some people that anger is a, is a natural part of life and of course it is and all beings feel anger. So not just human beings, even animals feel anger. As you know when a dog doesn't get the food it wants on time, it starts to bark and bite. So mm -hmm. even animals get angry. But what you must realize is, um, as human beings, we actually right now have the opportunity to control anger. We have the opportunity to, to control our mind. Mm -hmm. An animal doesn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if we think of anger as being a human human um, nature, nature, exactly. Yeah. If we think of it as acceptable, then we're not going to make an effort to get rid of it. So, so that's you, a, you think it's a part of your life, you don't need to exactly, do anything about and, it. Exactly, and so you end up experiencing the distress and the frustration from anger and you'll continue to live in that way. Mm -hmm. And so we must first realize then is anger is not acceptable, it's something mm -hmm. that really harms us. Okay. And to uh, illustrate this actually, we have to realize that when we get angry, we can't even do a regular task that we can normally do. Exactly. You can think back at the last time you got angry. Mm -hmm. When you got angry, you can't think straight, isn't it? Feel very uncomfortable. Exactly, stiff, yeah. exactly. So that's the, the that's a preliminary point. Mm -hmm. When we get angry, we can't even do a regular thing that we do. Actually, one day, um, a Brahmin named Sangharva came and met with our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha. Then he asked, "We know, venerable sir." Um, Sometimes what happens is those um, verses or the, those texts that I, that I have been reciting for a long time, I'm not able to recall them. Mm -hmm. 
So he's asking, Venerable Sir, why is it that I'm not able to recall um, those texts that I have been recite that I have been reciting for a long time? Um, all the more those texts that I have not recited for a long time. So he's asking, why is it that he cannot remember something very simple, mm -hmm. something that he always recites all the time? And so the Supreme Buddha explains to this Brahmin Sangara, Sangara, when you feel anger, when ill will. When, the, when that resentful feeling is within you, when your mind is overwhelmed by mm -hmm. ill will, when your mind is overwhelmed and obsessed by anger, the Supreme Buddha explains and you cannot think straight. You, you cannot know what's good for yourself. You cannot know what's good for others. Mm -hmm. You cannot know what's good for both yourself and others. So mm -hmm. in, in that sutta, the Supreme Buddha clearly explains then when you get angry, you cannot know, you cannot see clearly. Mm -hmm. You cannot know what's good for you. You cannot know what's good for others. That's why and we hear saying, um, uh, when you're angry, don't make decisions. Make decisions, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly why, because this is clearly explains when you get angry, you're you not. cannot think straight. You cannot see clearly. You cannot see as it really is. You cannot exactly. see reality. And to illustrate this point, the Supreme Buddha gives a beautiful simile. The Supreme Buddha shows, and suppose there's a, bo uh, there's a bowl of boiling water, but mm -hmm. it's bubbling under a fire. Mm -hmm on a fire and a, a person with a good sight with good eyes, eyesight goes and looks in the water to see his reflection now can you can he see his reflection no, no because the no. water is bubbling yeah. it's boiling so the supreme buddha explains just like a person cannot see his own reflection properly uh, when he see when he looks at a boiling bubbling uh, water just like that when a person becomes angry he cannot know what's good for him he cannot know what's uh, good for others he cannot see and know what's good for both so in that in that way you can clearly see that um, anger is definitely something that harms us so we must realize this and and make an effort to abandon anger so dear friends if you think it's all right to be angry well it's not so as supreme buddha has said very clearly it is something that we should be refrained from so make a personal note yourself, anger is not a part of life. So also many in answer, what really causes anger? People get angry for so many reasons. What is the causes for anger? Why do people get angry? Yes, I mean, the, the root of hatred is something that's within all beings that are that are traveling in, in, in this long journey of birth and death. But the Supreme Buddha explains um, depending on the way you think or uh, depending on the way you perceive a situation, you can either choose whether you give rise to anger or not. Mm -hmm. So you actually have, through that what the Blessed One is saying, is you actually have control of anger. You are able to control anger. And the Supreme Buddha explains the way you perceive a situation and, and the way you think further is what determines whether anger, is ari whether anger arises or not. So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Now suppose uh, something that a lot of people do is go shopping in the mall and mm -hmm. if it's a very busy season, busy time of year, then there's it's a lot of crowded. Ex it's very crowded and it's quite difficult to even get through from one shop mm -hmm. to another. And then suppose when you're walking with, with you know, um, you're carrying a lot of bags in your hand, um, someone comes and, uh, you know, brushes against you or steps on your foot. Mm -hmm. Now what's the natural reaction a person would feel? You get very really angry. Quite angry and you would start yes. to blame that person, right? With the condition and with the, with the intention. Exactly. And so you think, you know, he did that intentionally, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> and so you, if you perceive that situation, this is the experience, you can perceive that situation in two different ways. Mm -hmm. So if you perceive it in a way that arouses anger, then you'd be thinking, you know, oh, that person, all these people are always, you know, step, stepping on, on my foot, they're doing they these careful. things. They are not, exactly, so then you're bl blaming others. Mm -hmm. um, they are not careful, why couldn't they have gone a bit for, uh, you know, a bit to the careful, side, and yeah. you're now, you perceive the situation in a way that, uh, you, you perceived it in a negative way, in, and now you're thinking in a way that promotes anger. Mm -hmm. However, if you think in the other way, if you thought, you know, it's true that person did step on my foot and did, he, she did brush against me, however, well, you know, I could have walked a bit to the side. Mm -hmm. If you think in that, if you perceive the situation in a positive way, uh, it and was not intentional. It was not intentional. He mm -hmm. did, you know, he didn't do it intentionally. Or I could have been more careful. I could have, you know, gone to the, mm -hmm. gone to the side. There oh, was more crowd, space. these things happen. These things happen. So, yeah. if you think it in that way, then, then you're not thinking in a way that arouses anger. Yeah. Isn't it? So you're thinking in a way that really calms you. So mm -hmm. the Supreme Buddha explains, um, the way you think has a big uh, effect on whether anger arises or not. The Supreme Buddha explains the way you, the way you perceive that situation mm -hmm. and the way you think further through um, can determine whether 
on arise and anger arises or whether arise and anger further develops mm -hmm. so it's really a dependent on the way you think mm -hmm. if you can you know make an effort and correct the way where you think then you really in life you can have a good control of anger now this is not easy to do of course um, as human beings we our nature is to always um, think in a negative way and yeah. uh, perceive things in the negative way in a way that arouses anger that's why we are in samsara yet exactly so it the supreme buddha explains it this dhamma is for the wise not for the unwise only a wise yeah. person can can train his mind in a way that does not arouse anger. So it takes some wisdom for a person to train your mind in that way. However, if a person does do it, then indeed he can experience a result in this very life. Because as you know, one of the qualities of the Dhamma is this Dhamma is Sanditiko. Yeah. So you can experience the results of this Dhamma then in this very instantly, life. Yeah. Then and there, exactly. So <clears throat> we must realize that the cause of anger is really dependent on the way we perceive something and the way we think through it and if we think in the wise way then we won't we won't give rise to anger if we think in the unwise way in yeah. the foolish way then we will of course always be giving rise to anger so that's yeah. what we must understand all right so or we can ask our friends also to take a look at their to think of their last moment that they got angry and and also feel that discomfort that they felt at that moment and then it, it didn't really give a peace of mind probably sleepless nights for so many reasons so we invite you to uh, next moment when there's something happens uh, to get you angry try not to get angry as a man in Hans explained us uh, to think on the positive way think of the brighter side and try not to get angry and see how it feels so that they themselves can uh, we ourselves can uh, see the difference feeling the sensation that is in us so that the Sandhetika uh, uh, the quality of Dhamma can be experienced on our own yes. so also man in Mahansa, um in the society yet again uh, we always uh, find reasons in the external environment we get angry that is uh, that is an internal thing you get angry from within but you always find the reason to be outside and you find uh, someone or something to, to be blame. blamed and uh, enough examples in the society you go and something you hit hit on at least the wall you can even scold the wall for that even though it's material so we always find something in the society or somebody or something to blame. So is that right and how should we deal with such a situation? Definitely. I mean, um, as human beings, we always find a reason to blame another person. We don't take responsibility ourselves. But uh, what we must realize is that blaming others, it only worsens the situation. So although it, we, we may find it as an excuse uh, to, you know, I'm, I'm angry because you did this, you're like this, mm -hmm. it's not going to help us um, find a solution. Now, for example, uh, now suppose you're a working mother who had a very hectic day, mm -hmm. very busy schedule, and you come home and you realize that dinner is not made and the mm -hmm. house is a mess mm -hmm. and the children are just everywhere watching television, your husband is on the computer, <laughs> you know, not doing anything. And so yeah. in such a situation, how would you feel? You would feel angry. Yeah. And the first thing a mother would try to do is start to blame the children, yeah. start to blame the, pair, um, the, the husband, husband, and you know, why can't you, you know, do something at home? And, and you start to blame everyone in the mm -hmm. house. Now you have to look and see when you when you start to blame your children, when you start to blame your husband, does that solve the situation? It doesn't. It, most of the time, it doesn't. It what worsens it, it worsen the situation. What yeah. happens is when you blame when you blame others, what happens? Your children gets even more down. Yeah. Their mood, you know, they they get scared and they feel sad, and your mm -hmm. husband gets even more upset, yeah. isn't it? So the, it what it does is it really worsens the situation. So we have to understand this and realize the fact that blaming others and yelling at others, scolding others is not really the solution to um, getting rid of anger and uh, finding the solution to a problem. Now, if we go back to that same working mother, you know, when she comes home, she realizes that no, you know, dinner isn't cooked and um, the house is a mess. Mm -hmm. If she at least has the ability to be mindful and, and refrain herself from not blaming others, then at least if she's calm mm -hmm. and she herself started to do the work and and when the children sees it what will they do what they what will they join and help. exactly they'll at least try to join and help mm -hmm. because 
And so by controlling her anger, what she did is she kind of did something to help solve the problem instead of making it worse, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. So we have to realize that although it's very natural for us to blame others, what it really most of the time does, it, it, it worsens the situation. So if we can be mindful and stop ourselves from being angry at that at least moment and uh, rather stop ourselves from blaming others then we are actually stepping to solving the problem and it, and at that moment if you can even think in a very understanding way and think you know it's true that I, I did work a very busy schedule but then you know maybe my children had a very bad day at home at, at school mm -hmm. or my husband may might have had a quite a hectic schedule at his work so if you think in a way that's very understanding mm -hmm then that helps you to solve the problem and work your way um, out of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you took a beautiful example from a household, how anger really works both ways, because yeah. mostly at home, either mother or the father gets angry, and finally who suffers is mostly the kids. Yes. So they should, be, they should have that environment at home to be, uh, to be peaceful and to be happy as a family so yes. that there's no room for anger. So with that, dear friends, we take a short break and stay with us. We'll be back. Welcome back to Path to Happiness. We've been discussing today about anger. We discussed many things about anger so far. We discussed uh, what is anger and why do people get angry and uh, also we gave you some exercise to do at home to see how, uh, how you get angry and to do a, uh, not to get angry at another situation that you encounter in the future and see the difference to yourself. So uh, let us again ask from Amani and Mahansa. There are different ways people express anger and uh, harmful ways, uh, many different ways. And there are consequences. And what are these? How, how do people actually uh, express anger? And what are the consequences of anger? Definitely. Um, when we get angry, different people express anger in different ways. When some people get angry, they don't speak they don't say anything they become very moody and they just go to a side and they just stay alone yeah. that's their way of expressing anger but when some people get angry they start blaming other people saying harsh words to other people and so when some people get angry they use their body to hurt others so they mm. become physically Violent. abusive exactly and that's when violence um, mm. comes to place so in this way different people have different ways of expressing anger Mm -hmm. And what we have to realize is that the way we express anger can really have very harmful consequences. And if you think um, a single a single thought of anger in one person, mm -hmm. it can develop within themselves and it can even affect a whole society or a whole country or it can even affect a per affect the whole um, world globally. Mm -hmm. So for example, suppose someone um, forms a hatred mm -hmm. or uh, he gets angry and he starts to uh, blame other people and he starts to even uh, sort to things like murdering other people. And because of that bout of anger, because of that bout of hatred, what happens is if he, he continues that negative thought, that he continues with that negative thought of anger and hatred, and what happens is he starts to divide groups in society. So mm -hmm. he, he says he certain things and he starts to gossip and he starts to break people in society. And when this continues further, and it, it, it can even develop, um, to the level where a whole country is experiencing a huge problem. Now, as you, if you look at our history, of course, we can see um, if the world experienced wars, then most of the time, it was most of the time, it's a cause of a single person's angry thought or hateful thought. Yeah. So you can see that a, a single person's negative, mm -hmm. an unwholesome thought, can affect uh, a whole 
a whole world to and suffer. yeah exactly and it's what causes mass murders and wars mm -hmm. where thousands of people die and become become hurt so you can see that the way we express anger is quite different mm -hmm. and that's actually thinking about the external world you know what what does getting angry has um, what does the effect of anger has on the external world world but if you really look at ourselves and how do we feel when we get angry you can ask yourself that question. I mean, when we get angry, how do we feel? When we get angry, can you, you, you can't even eat properly. Mm -hmm. Most of the people, when they get angry, they say, you know, I don't want to eat. I don't want no, anything to drink. they put aside is eating. E exactly, yeah. eating. So they're really hurting themselves. They can't eat. They cannot drink anything. They mm -hmm. cannot even sleep, sleep right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's that, it's that, that unwholesome thought in your mind is affecting your whole um, daily life, really. Yeah. It, it and takes away your peace and your uncomfortable. Exactly, and you're always, those thoughts are haunting you. You can't sleep. You. I mean, yeah. try to sleep when you're angry. Yeah. See if you can sleep. No, exactly. those angry thoughts are haunting you. You can't yeah. sleep. Not only that, in fact, that, um, that, uh, that unwholesome thought can have a negative impact on your physical body. Mm. You know, your blood pressure increases, your heart rate increases. And if you're someone who's on, the, if you're someone who constantly gets angry, that can really have a long-term impact on your health. Oh. Yeah, it, it can cause high blood pressure and mm -hmm. can lead to heart attacks. Now, I'm sure you have heard some people get strokes when, uh, in certain situations where they are, you know, flashing with anger. anger yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that anger even has a impact on your physical health. Mm -hmm. And not only that, what's even more harmful is the fact that when you're angry, what you do with your body, as we discussed before. When you're angry, you cannot see the right from wrong. You cannot see what's good for you. You cannot see what's good for others. You cannot see what's good for either, mm -hmm. either parties. And so what you do is you end up doing wrong things through body, through speech and mind. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when you get angry, what you do is you end up um, hitting other people. You, some people, you know, make schemes and kill other people, mm -hmm. you know, kill human beings because, because of anger, because of hatred. And some people go and lie. And they try to break people's friendships. Mm -hmm. And when some people get angry, what happens? Oh, when that anger develops to a level of hatred and when, thinking they want to take revenge, what people do is they go and engage in sexual misconduct. They mm -hmm. try to um, break pe break couples or bre break mm -hmm. people's friendships. And in this way, people do many things that, that are unwholesome through body, speech, and mind. Mm -hmm. And the consequences of doing all of that is um, you end up, in being reborn in, in bad worlds in your next life. Now, a very uh, interesting um, story the Supreme Buddha explains is in, in the Mal, in Sutta known as Mallika, Sutta the Supreme Buddha asks, and the Supreme Buddha um, explains a beautiful, um, if a uh, very interesting consequence of anger, that is mm -hmm. uh, Queen Mallika, who is the wife of uh, King Kosala, he, she comes and asks, um, a great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, she comes and worships the Supreme Buddha and she says, you know, Venerable Sir, some women in this world um, are very um, ugly, she says, they are very unpleasant looking, mm -hmm. but, uh, but some people, some women are really pretty, they are very mm -hmm. beautiful, they are very nice to look at. Mm -hmm. And then she also asks, Venerable Sir, some women in this, in this society we see are very, um, very high status in society. They have a very good recognition in society, but some people have no recognition at all. They're just um, normal, very um, mm -hmm. average, yeah. average people, exactly. Mm -hmm. And also she asks, Venerable Sir, in society I see some people are very, some women, actually she asks these women, she asks some women are very uh, wealthy, mm -hmm. but some are not. So these are the three points that she makes and she asks Venerable Sir, what's the reason? Mm. And so in reply to that... Actually when you kept on saying that, it, it would be very interesting for our friends to know. So if, if, if some of them are ugly and what, what was the reason and then they can do something about it and then be much more beautiful. Exactly. So in that in the Sutta, the Supreme Buddha explains, O oh Malika, the reason why some people are ugly is that in their past lives, they were very much prone to anger. And so the Supreme Buddha explains, because of that anger, mm. um, as a result of that negative thought in, within your mind, that caused you to be reborn as an ugly person, as an unpleasant person in this life. Mm -hmm. And those in their past lives who had um, loving kindness, who did not get angry, even when they are blamed, even when they are spoken to harshly, those people who did not get angry, 
those are the ones who are born, when they're reborn in the next life, those are the ones who are reborn as beautiful people. So in that sutta, the Supreme Buddha explains clearly, mm -hmm. this anger is what really causes a person, mm -hmm. what really um, leads a person to determine whether that person is reborn as a beautiful person or, or an ugly, or ugly person. person. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can really um, understand this by thinking it in this way. When you get angry, mm -hmm. if you go to the mirror and look at yourself, mm -hmm. You can ask you can yourself. See it instantly that exactly. You don't look that good, yeah. Exactly. I mean, you become red. You become very dark. Funny. Exactly. You're not yeah. pleasant to look at at all. At so all. that's the result of anger in this very life that you can exactly. experience in this mm -hmm. very moment. And the the extended result is mm -hmm. that when in the in the next life you're reborn as a, a person who's not a, who's not very pleasant to look at, who not is unpleasant, Nobody not would attractive. Want to look at you, yeah. Exactly. So not getting angry, even when you're being blamed blamed even when you're um, being spoken to harshly is the secret to beauty really yeah, exactly. the supreme Buddha explains the secret to beauty in that sutta and uh, just just since it's in interesting i'll also address the other two points mm -hmm. um, where uh, queen malika asks about jealousy uh, about um, how, why people don't have a good status in society uh, actually manas before you get there also yeah. the other side of uh, not getting angry or being kind also that leads into people us to get reborn as a beautiful people. Exactly. So if you're someone who controls your anger and who don't get angry, mm -hmm. if you're someone who has loving kindness within you, mm -hmm. then of course in the next life then you'll be reborn as a, as a beautiful very person. Beautiful. Exactly. And also when you're very kind and when you have that pleasant uh, feeling in your mind, you instantly also you look beautiful. Exactly. Instantly also yeah. you, you feel See beautiful. That. Definitely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, um, in that sutta, Malika, Queen Malika also asks about uh, the status, why there's a difference in status between women. And in that sutta, the Supreme Buddha explains, um, those who have, uh, who don't have a good status, that means a low status in society, who are mm -hmm. not recognized in society, the reason is in their past lives, they were very jealous of others. Okay. And so when, what happens is those people, when they see other people successful, having a good house, having good families, having good, having a good career, having mm -hmm. good edu education, they feel jealous. Mm -hmm. They don't rejoice in seeing other people doing well. Okay. And so the Supreme Buddha explains the effect is the consequence of being being jealous is that in the next life, when you're reborn in the human world, you're reborn in very lowly recognized uh, families or you're not a recognized person. Yeah. You're just an average normal person. You don't get Nobody any place this, in yeah. society. Whereas if you're someone, the Supreme Buddha explains, those women who have a good status in society, those are the women who did not feel jealous upon seeing other people doing well. So when other people were, were getting a good education, getting a good career, having a good family life, mm -hmm. those people didn't feel jealous. They rejoiced in they seeing. Rejoiced, yeah. yeah, and as a result of that wholesome thought, mm -hmm. when they are reborn in the next life, mm -hmm. the result is they, they get a good recognition in society. They get a good place in society. And the last one uh, Queen Malika asks is about um, about uh, being wealthy. Mm -hmm. As you know, in, in the world today, we see some women are very rich. They're mm -hmm. very wealthy. They're very well-to-do. Mm -hmm. Whereas some people, they have a hard time finding a meal for the day. Exactly. So there's this difference in society. And again, the Supreme Buddha explains the reason is those women who are very wealthy, mm -hmm. who are very well-to-do in their past lives, what they did is they gave alms. So they gave things to other people. They gave food to other people. They gave bedding and clothing to other people. They gave houses to other people. So they were very generous. Mm -hmm. So they had a heart of generosity. As a result of that good action in the next life, what happens is... They are rewarded. Exactly. They are rewarded and they are very wealthy. Mm -hmm. They have nothing that they don't have. Mm -hmm. And the other side is if you're someone who don't give, if you're someone who is very stingy, mm -hmm who doesn't give at all to uh, to anyone, then as a, as a result of that unwholesome action in the next life, you, when you're reborn in the human world, um, you don't have a good you, you don't have a good way of supporting yourself. You're born in very poor families and you have to sometimes starve, starve through life. So mm -hmm. it's the Supreme Buddha explains these are the consequences of your own actions. Yeah, that is a very interesting explanation about why some are, some people are ugly, why some people are beautiful, and why some are wealthy, why some are poor, why some part of the society have very good status and some are not even seen, not even recognized. So uh, that leads us to our final questions for the uh, for the program. Uh, 
uh, as much as we, we spoke about anger and what causes it and the consequences in, in, in quite depth. So it is also uh, very much helpful to explain to our friends uh, what do we really do about it and how can we really overcome anger because uh, we'll be very interested to know and the actions, what should we really do and how, wh how should we practice uh, to get rid of anger in this birth itself if possible. Yes, it is indeed possible. Um, and what we have to first realize is that our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, is someone who completely abandoned anger. So the Supreme Buddha completely abandoned anger and then taught and then taught us how to abandon anger. And so we have to realize that we are take we are getting the solution from someone who actually experienced a state of non-anger. Mm -hmm. So then we can really see understand that it is indeed possible to be anger free. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, from the moment the Supreme Buddha attained perfect enlightenment over 2,600 years ago, for the 45 years the Supreme Buddha lived as the Buddha, there isn't a moment in the Supreme Buddha's life where anger has arisen. There's not a moment in the Supreme Buddha's life where the Supreme Buddha has said a harsh word to anyone. There's not a moment in the Supreme Buddha's life where the Supreme Buddha, where other people were affected because of the Supreme Buddha's unwholesome actions. Mm. So there is not a moment of anger because the Supreme Buddha completely abandoned the root of anger, the root of hatred. So we must first realize then it is indeed possible to get rid of anger. And once we know this, we must we must also ask ourselves then why do we get angry? You know why is you know why do we fuel anger? Mm -hmm. Now sometimes we do fuel anger, don't yeah, we? Yeah. When we are angry, we know we know we are angry, but we cannot do anything about it. And probably we don't want to. We sometimes enjoy being that's angry. A, that's a good thing that you said. That is the fact that you don't want to, and mm. and the reason is is the Supreme Buddha himself explains there is a gratification of anger. Mm. So there is a gratification side and what what happens is the ordinary person gets caught up with this gratification and, and he continues in this long journey of samsara. Now to understand this gratification, I'll give you an example. Now if you take a baby for mm -hmm. example, um, that baby himself, now suppose that baby is trying to walk and he goes and hits something. Mm. And once he hits something, what happens is he, uh, he, when he feels the pain, he starts to cry, and then he says, you know, if the mother comes and say, oh, you know, I'll hit the, I'll hit the, um, the toy that hit you, mm -hmm. and then when the mother hits the toy, what happens is the baby feels happy. Yeah. The, fi the baby feels gratification mm -hmm. in seeing the mother hit the, uh, the, the toy. Mm -hmm. So we can see through that even as a baby, there is a sense of gratification to anger. Yeah. So what happens is that gratification, we get caught up with that gratification and we continue through. Mm -hmm. And most of the time what we find gratification, what happens is when we get angry, when we feel hatred, we find gratification by seeing other people hurt, mm -hmm. by seeing, by taking revenge from other people. So we might have to realize then there is a gratification side to anger, but what that leads to is even more harm. Because we, in trying to find gratification, what we do is we hurt other people, we lie to other people, yeah. and we, we, we rejoice in other people being unsuccessful. unsuccessful and, and that's a, Exactly, and that's a very bad thing to do. Yeah, and so we have to realize this fact and then understand the fact that, they, uh, that anger is actually dangerous. So understand the dangerous side of anger. I think we throughout the program we did talk about the dangers mm -hmm. of anger, not only to ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, not just even physically, um, but it has a long, if long-term effect on oh, on your sansara. exactly in terms of sansara, mm -hmm. and not only yourself. The fact that you get angry can have an effect on other people, mm -hmm. even a society can mm -hmm. affect a whole society negatively. And so in reply to this this big problem that we all have, mm -hmm. this flame of anger, the Supreme Buddha explains the way to extinguish, put out, cool down this flame of anger is loving kindness. Mm -hmm. So our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, is the greatest person who has the most uh, kind, most loving kindness in this world. Mm -hmm. You cannot compare the Supreme Buddha's loving kindness to anyone in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the Supreme Buddha, having loving kindness, having spread loving kindness, having a heart of loving kindness himself, a great teacher introduces this principle, this new principle to us. Because loving kindness is not something that uh, that's a natural part of us. It's something that we have to build in ourselves. Build in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because if we had loving kindness within us, mm -hmm. then mo chances are we, we would have been already out of this samsara. Yeah. But what's really natural part of 
us is the anger. Mm -hmm. And so the Supreme Buddha explains, this is something that you really have to build in within yourself. Mm -hmm. And so in order to do that, you have to spread loving kindness. And what loving kindness in Pali, it's known as metta. Mm -hmm. And what metta means is friendliness. Mm -hmm. And so you have to understand if you're friendly towards yourself, then you would never hurt yourself, would yeah. you? No, no, no. And if you're friendly towards others, you wouldn't hurt other people, mm -hmm. isn't it? If you're friendly towards your um, neighbors, if you're friendly towards your family, then you wouldn't go and hurt their feelings. You wouldn't say things to hurt them. You wouldn't do things to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So in this way, the Supreme Buddha explains, metta is friendliness. So you are supposed to promote friendliness, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you do so, what happens is, um, the Supreme Buddha yeah. explains you, you think in a way that promotes friendliness. Friendliness, as opposed to anger. As opposed to anger. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is you think things like um, in, the, in the train of thought, like may I be free from anger, mm -hmm. may I be free from ill will, may I be free from hatred, may I be free from physical and mental suffering, mm -hmm. may I be free from um, jealousy, mm -hmm. and may I live happily. So you think in that, so that positive way of thinking, that train yeah. of thought, and then you little by little gradually extend your um, thought mm -hmm. to others around you. So may all beings in my house mm -hmm. be free from anger, be free from ill will, be mm -hmm. free from jealousy. Mm -hmm. And this way you extend it to other people. Okay. And so the Supreme Buddha explains in doing this, the Supreme Buddha explains you must spread loving kindness. Um, in such a wide aspect where you spread loving kindness like a mother mm -hmm. looks at her uh, only, only son, child, yeah. only child. Yes. Now you have to understand this in, you know, to understand this we have to kind of look into it. Now if you take a mother, mm -hmm. um, how does she love her only son? All her love, all her um, kindness, all her love is directed towards that son. She'll give in anything. Exactly. And, and even the student would explain she, she, will, she will even give her life to save that person, mm -hmm. that, that child. child. So all her love is directed towards the son and even if that son does, or son or daughter, the child does something wrong, mm -hmm. then that mother forgives the son, isn't yeah. it? She's and forgiving and she's very kind to us. Exactly. The so that love, that loving kindness, that friendliness that she has does not change even if your child does something bad. Mm -hmm. Because that's something that's within a mother. And so the Supreme Buddha explains, that's how you must look at, a, look at the whole world. Mm -hmm. Now it's not easy, isn't not it? Not at all. Exactly. It's not, it's not easy at all, but it's something that you can develop. Mm -hmm. Now what you have to realize is, now suppose there's someone, and when he gets angry uh, towards, towards a certain person, maybe he won't go and um, hurt him physically, or maybe he won't go and um, say words to hurt that person. He won't do, it, he won't do any act. Um, exter uh, outwardly mm -hmm. but uh, when you're angry with a person when that person becomes unhappy when he gets down when things bad things happen to him mm -hmm. seeing that you enjoy mm -hmm. you rejoice in it mm -hmm. did you understand what I said yes yeah so um, however if that same thing happens to your, your own son mm -hmm. you would never rejoice in seeing your own son yeah. being unsuccessful your own son uh, if something bad happens to your own son you would never um, find pleasure in seeing it you have that personal affection towards your own you have son. that affection yeah you have that affection towards that son mm -hmm. so the Supreme Buddha explained this is how you must look at the whole world mm -hmm. and you can imagine if all people in this world have this this thought of friendliness within their heart then you know you won't see any of these conflicts you won't see any of these fights in this world and what you have to realize is this is loving kindness is not something that um, that you have to only spread towards your own family or your, mm -hmm. your own friends as Supreme Buddha explains so this is how you exactly it's universal mm -hmm. this is how you must look at the whole world that's mm -hmm. how the Supreme Buddha looked at the whole mm -hmm. world no matter regardless of your religion regardless of your race regardless of which country you looked at you 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 live in this is how we, this is this is how you must look at the whole world. So it's a very wide perspective. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a widened uh, uh, mind. So you need a widened mind in order to think in this way. Mm -hmm. So the Supreme Buddha explains, if you think in this way, then you're able to um, st put a stop to anger. You can stop uh, anger from arising. Unar you can stop unarising anger from arising. Mm -hmm. And you can stop the arising, abandon the arising anger. So when you get angry, what you must do is you must become mindful of the fact that you're angry mm -hmm. and start to spread loving kindness and little by little as you develop mm -hmm. your your train of thought as your mind becomes widened you'll be able to spread you you'll be able to see 
look at the whole world in the way the Supreme Buddha explained. Mm -hmm. And what you have to realize is these, uh, this anger is something that we all feel. Mm -hmm. It's a universal feeling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, you don't have to be a Buddhist to be a, you cannot, you know, you, can say, you cannot say like that all people in this world, all people of all religions feel anger. And so regardless of who you are, which following you teach, if you practice loving kindness within you, then indeed you will be able to experience that state of anger freeness. Mm. So this is something you have to understand. And the other thing is, as you um, practice loving kindness within you, uh, what will happen is you will be quickly able to realize the next moment you're angry. Yeah, yeah. Because you're now conscious, you're, you're very conscious, you're very mindful. So yeah. it helps you to develop your mindfulness. Yeah. Because remember, loving kindness, you're now, if you go back to one of the questions you asked me is what causes anger and mm -hmm. we talked about how it's the train of thought that really determines wh yeah. whether uh, anger arises or not, right? Mm -hmm. So what spreading loving kindness does is it, it, it guides you, it directs you in thinking in the right way, yeah. thinking in the wise way. And when you think in the line of thought, the next moment you become angry, you'll quickly be able to mindful, be mm -hmm. mindful of the fact that you're angry and, okay, and try to make an effort to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. However, if you're someone who's always angry and you think that anger is acceptable, mm -hmm. anger is okay, then there is no, no way. Anywhere. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's the importance of um, introducing loving kindness into your life. Uh, like you said, Manasi, does, is that right to think like we anger is something something that we have been carried with us in our sansara? Yes. So likewise, can the loving kindness mm -hmm. also can become can uh, travel along sansara? Well, it's if you, if, you, if you're someone who start to practice mm -hmm. uh, loving kindness within you, then if you practice it to a certain level, then mm -hmm. of course that that feeling of loving kindness can come with you to the next life. That's exactly. why there are some people in this world. Naturally kind. Yeah, yeah. they are naturally kind. That yeah. They naturally have that feeling of loving kindness loving within you. But it's something that you have to develop. Develop. Yeah, yeah. So because until you abandon anger. Completely. Yes, com until you abandon completely, anger is within you. So mm -hmm. you have to realize that. But when you when you develop the meditation really to a high level, then that that um, that wholesome thought can indeed go with you. Mm -hmm. But what through loving kindness, what your ultimate goal must be to completely abandon anger. Anger mm -hmm. and become free from this long journey of sansara. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So dear friends, we have come to the end of the program and we discussed a lot of details about anger. We, we discussed about what is anger, what causes anger and how we react to anger and the negative consequences of anger. So anger is something that we all should refrain from and we also most importantly uh, learn today how should abandon anger it is to spread loving kindness. So we invite all of you to spread loving kindness and abandon anger and to be that kindest person in the world. Also, uh, let us take this opportunity to share all our merits that we collected throughout the program to our Manian Mahansa for the precious Dhamma teaching that uh, she shared with us. And may Triple Gems bless you. Namo Buddhaya. <laughs>